Handbook.com. Okay, mine's pretty, not more of a tool thing than anything else, but I hate lesson planners. I know I need them, I know I need somebody to keep track of what I'm doing, but I don't, I hate them. I have, I've tried pretty ones, i tried templates, i tried a couple of software ideas, and I couldn't really find anything that worked. And then some, somebody somewhere blogged about planbook.com, and so I took a look at it. So this is what, this is what mine looks like. And I use a lot of color on mine in order to keep track of where I am. Um, planbook.com uh, gives you a lot of flexibility in how you do things. Uh, I've got, this was, this is from last year, so I had, I had three preps last year. And so trying to keep track of everything was driving me crazy. Um, it's dynamically sized, so it'll go as, it'll go as long as you need it to go. Uh, you'll notice here, it also does, it will put on there, you can put your, you know, your title of your lesson, sorry, the title of your lesson, you can put what you're planning to do, the homework is, what materials you need, so you remember that, oh, by the way, I need to bring, you know, I need these copies, I need to make sure I have my patty paper out, all that sort of thing. Uh, my principal likes student-friendly learning targets, so he said, okay, you can do this, but you need to make sure you write it out there. I also, it also has my state standards. Uh, when I've checked, it has like all 50 states listed, Common Core, whatever it is you do, uh, it should have a standard there for you. Uh, the numbering's a little bit funny, but it's got them there. Um, it lets me organize things by units, all that sort of stuff. In this case, this was our week of testing. Uh, so I'm just, these are just different events there. Um, you know, I can do stuff like this list will happen. This was like right here before, right before Christmas. Um, and so when I look at this thing, and so I mean, you, you look at, okay, well, what, how does this work? Then, well, here's my, again, I'm also one of those schools that's on a, on a uh, block schedule. So we do an alternating AB block. Uh, if you've got a regular straight schedule, it can handle that. It can handle other sorts of cycles there pretty well. It's very flexible. Um, it can, uh, I've got my classes here. And again, I like to color code. So I have my, each of my classes color coded a different thing. I also put my conference period on there just because uh, that way I can make notes of things like, you know, a 504 meeting, all that sort of good stuff. And then with the class itself, you can put on here, again, I can set my the class color. You can, you can put your class times. You don't have to. If you don't put your class times, it just lists everything in alphabetical order. I've done either or, depending on what I needed to do. Um, but here's to me where the biggest uh, power of, well, there's two places, but this is to me one of the big places is, is the tabs. Uh, it comes with four tabs that are built in, that are these, these four down here. I don't care about any of these, but I care about the standards. So it has, already has a standards tab set up, where again, you can pull your standards, you can select which standards go with which lesson, you don't have to type it out again, you don't have to look at what the standard number is, all that little strange dot stuff. Um, and then you have six custom ones. And so I have the, all those things different schedules. And so it was just all sorts of wonderful and kept me, I could, uh, I could also copy from year to year. So like this was last year, I've already made my copy over for next year. So I've got all my lessons that are transferred over. And then, so life was great. Well then, once I started using it, I realized it actually had also solved two additional problems. The first one of these is reflections. Because what I've really found powerful is being able to reflect upon the lesson after I've taught it. Okay, what went well? What went poorly? What should I do next year? What, you know, making a note, okay, well, this class still only got this far. This class got this far. What do I need to do? And what I end up doing is I use Planbook for that. That's what all this green text is where I'm writing reflections on things like, um, let's see this one. And so I mean, I'm going through, I have reflections on this worksheet ended up working out fairly well uh, for lack of anything better to do, that, that's what happened. Um, you, know, the, I, you know, I forgot to do something, so make sure you remember to do that next year. 
this is all the sort of thing here. And where that's really beneficial is, again, when I, when I import this for next year, it will have all of those reflections built in. And so what I do is I take those reflections and anything that I need to make a you know, reminder of, I stick it in notes. So that's what I have over here. It's, this is from 2015. We finished up the lab packet, although I had them skip activity number five. I'm not going to remember next year in, in December that I need to skip activity number five. But this is a reminder note to me to remember to remind me to do that. And so those are two big benefits that I can use here with these, just these two tabs. And then the other thing that it saw for me, this, this was huge. Uh, my principal decided that we needed to put all of our lesson plans on our school web pages. And there was an immediate freak out because you can imagine it's hard enough to keep up with your lesson plans, let alone updating your school web page every stinking week. And so with planbook.com, I don't have to worry about that because it has this lovely little thing here called sharing options. And you put in some random text here, and you can select which tabs are publicly shared. So it's not going to share my reflections. It's not going to share my notes. Um, my, my principal can't see that, that I screwed up that day. Um, but it creates a link. And I can also decide, OK, I only want them to see two weeks at a time. Because I have some parents who will get upset because four weeks from now, I'm not doing something. So I give them two weeks. And it creates a link for me. Well, I can take that link, and they're revamping our school website, so I can't show you that. But like on my regular class blog, I'll have a combined lesson links plan, and I click on that. And obviously, we're in the middle of summer, so nothing's going to show up. But you know, it will show whatever those those publicly available tabs that I had selected will show up on here. The same thing. We use Canvas as our LMS. And so I have that embedded in my course syllabus. So that the students can also check here. And again, they'll see, I'll put, you know, I have the classwork, I have the homework there, I have uh, whatever the basic lesson plan is, I have the, the uh, standards, all that stuff. And so that, so again, now that I have this, as long as I keep my lesson plans up to date on Planbook, I don't have to worry about any of the other updating part. It takes care of that. The only thing, and again, we, we like free stuff. Okay, this is not free, but it costs twelve dollars a year. Um, and if you get more teachers at your school signed up, because again, once I share with other teachers that oh by the way this will handle less updating your lesson plans for you, we have a lot of teachers at my school sign up for this thing. Um, so I, I think it's like for for so many teachers at your school, because you'll four it is four. Okay, thank you. For every four teachers, you get like an additional month. Added on to your to your subscription, um, so I have like an additional six months already added on to mine, just from different teachers that are signed up. Uh, you do get a one month free trial, but it, it, it has saved my sanity more than once on any one occasion. So it's my book. Thank you.